welcome to the Bible. We are in Exodus, the book of Exodus, where we get the Ten Commandments. Not only are we in these 40 chapters of Exodus, but today, verse chapter 20, verse 10, we're actually in the Ten Commandments, and we're looking at the fourth of the commandments. This is the Sabbath commandment, and verse 10 says this, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work. You, your, you or your son or your daughter, your male or your female servant or your cattle or your sojourner who stays with you. So this is in contrast and is continuing verse 9. Verse 9 said, Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath. So there we are at verse 9 and 10. So we see right here that in contrast to six working days, uh, which is basically the first day of the week, our Sunday through Friday. Those are our six working days. After that, there's a period called the Sabbath. That part is called holy, verse 8. And we are to work during those first six days, including the first day of the week. Uh, and then we see here, in contrast, the verse we have today, but six days your work, but the seventh day. And then we have different translations where some will say it is a Sabbath of the Lord. Some will say it is the Sabbath of the Lord. You go and look at your original Hebrew. And those are both valid translations of the Hebrew because of the, the way it flows through there. But really, it probably should say the Sabbath because whenever you see the Sabbath mentioned, the seventh day Sabbath mentioned in the Bible, it's always like if there's a list of things going on, if there's a sequence of days, the Sabbath's always put there first. It is distinct from other, there's a few different ceremonial Sabbaths that were added after sin entered the world. This Sabbath is the Sabbath from before sin entered the world. This is the Sabbath from creation. This is the Sabbath that Adam and Eve, on, uh, on that first day they existed, on the sixth day of the week, this is the Sabbath that they observed on the first seventh day at sundown. This is the Sabbath that they observed before they sinned, before there was any sin or murder or mayhem, before they'd visited the tree of knowledge of good and evil and had swallowed the devil's lies. This was the Sabbath that they observed. And this is the Sabbath that Christians today can observe also at the end of the, every cycle of six days. And you come to the seventh day, and that's sundown Friday to uh, through sundown Saturday, Saturday. That's the seventh day biblically. So it says here, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work. Now look at, you think, well, well okay, so I'll hire someone else to do some work for me. But no, neither you nor your, you can't be your kids. It can't be any servants who work for you. You're not going to go to the store on this day and have the clerk do something for you. You're not going to go to a restaurant on this day and pay somebody for food that you, you know, you're not going to pay somebody to be your servant. It's right built into the commandment here. I know there's a few people that maybe practice that. Well, if you're going to practice it according to the commandment, there it is. Uh, you can read it for yourself. Verse 10 says, no servants. Your servants aren't going to work for you on the Sabbath. This is a day when we're all on the same level. It's a day when we all come together in this beautiful opportunity to worship God together at the same, uh, same space. And so, no, we wouldn't have somebody just doing something for us. We wouldn't hire, like if you were a Jewish person, you wouldn't hire a Gentile to flip the light switch for you or put the turn the fire on or off. This, this if you're going to observe it according to God's word, according to the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, the Exodus, the second book, Shemot, the Numbers, if you're going to observe it the way the Bible says, the way that Jesus gave it, the way that Jesus observed it, you're going to be not having someone else do some work for you. You're going to get your work done in the six days previous, and then you're going to come to the Sabbath. Now, one question comes up, to what extent is this work that we're talking about? Uh, what work can be done on the Sabbath and what work can't? Well, if you have things that are uh, natural, like you have an animal that you've got to milk that animal, and it's got to be milked every day, by all means, it should be milked on the Sabbath as well. That's uh, otherwise, the animal will have, there will be pain, there will be problems with that. If somebody has uh, an, a medical emergency, you don't just say, well, let's wait two more hours to, before we call the ambulance, it's still the Sabbath. No, it's, Jesus said it's, it's right to do good on the Sabbath. So yeah, if you have a medical emergency on the Sabbath, go straight to it. Um, go ahead and address that. Uh, that is, a, it's good to do good on the Sabbath. So, uh, but you're not going to do secular. Let's say you are uh, have some kind of activities that are kind of at the edge. Are you going to do those things on the Sabbath? No, you're not, because 
You can do those things after the Sabbath, if they're even valid, if they're valid to do. You can do them after the Sabbath. And people will ask, you know, well, is it valid to rinse your plate? Well, I think it is valid to rinse your plate. This is talking about your your strong labors, the kind of labors. No, you're not going to vacuum the carpet on the Sabbath. You're not going to vacuum the whole carpet. But if there's a big mess, a big spill that happens, and people are at risk of falling down, slipping and sliding, and breaking their neck, hopefully you'll clean that up, even if it's the Sabbath. Clean it up enough so that people don't slip in it. So this is a common sense. It's a rational thing. God made a rational universe. We're part of that rational universe. God gave us a brain. He wants us to use our common sense. But we've got to be careful because it's very easy to come up with lots of freaky justifications for stuff that we want to do on the Sabbath that shouldn't be done on the Sabbath. So when you have a choice, err on the side of waiting, and you can deal with it after Sabbath. But let's do good on the Sabbath when we have a marginal case. Every time you should choose doing good. All right, we'll say more as we get deeper along here. God bless you and have a wonderful day.